Some years ago, I did a video showing off some Hot Wheels that I had sent off to a plater and had copper plated. I tried unsuccessfully to plate them at home and ended up giving up and shipping them off. However, the desire to copper plate die casts at home has always been sitting in the back of my mind, and recently I happened across something that I thought could be used to this effect. Originally, I was copper plating just for the aesthetics, but now I'd like to be able to do it to obtain a shiny surface for my red line restorations. Paint just can't replicate a polished metal all that well. The point to copper plating a car is that the copper is a strike plate so that I can nickel plate over the copper. More on this in a bit. But for now, I will take this car apart and remove the paint. Once the original paint is removed, I'll go over the body with some double aught steel wool. This will remove any remaining paint residue and prepare the surface for the next step. That step is painting with this. This is Total Ground. It's a carbon-based conductive paint used in electronics. It costs about $18 from Amazon, and I'll leave a link below. Obviously, copper plating is not its intended purpose. However, it works very well for this. To use it, you simply paint the car just like you're using spray paint. It goes on relatively thin. However, the surface it produces is anything but smooth. Unfortunately, this product is not made for its aesthetics characteristics. I'm currently working on a way to get it to go through my airbrush to get a more consistent and thinner surface. The main problem I'm having is thinning the paint down. The other issue I'm having has to do with safety. There are more than a few safety warnings on this can, and I figure the reason the product sprays the way it does is to not atomize the paint particles. This way you can't breathe them as easily. Running it through an airbrush does the exact opposite of this. Anyway, that's for another video. For this video, I'm going to use this can as intended by the manufacturer. When painting, make sure you paint the car body inside and out. The bath we'll be using later is corrosive and will eat any die cast left exposed. After the paint is dried, I use some 2000 grit sandpaper and wet sand the car. This paint doesn't like to be sanded at all and great care must be taken so that I don't sand through it. Now I can begin the plating process. The first thing I'll need is a glass container large enough to fit the car with room to spare. I'm going to use this pickle jar as it allows me to seal the bath after I'm done to be used for later. To the jar I'll add some copper sulfide crystals. This is found at hardware stores in the plumbing section in the form of root killer. You don't need to measure this out or anything, just fill the bottom of your container. To the crystals I'll add some hot distilled water. The water doesn't need to be boiling, the heat is just there to help dissolve the crystals. After adding the water, stir until the crystals dissolve. Our plating setup needs a power source, and for this I'll use a D-cell battery. I'll use test leads to run from the battery to the parts. The positive side of the battery will be represented by a black test lead and is the anode, and the negative will be represented by a green test lead and is the cathode. I attach the test leads using some electrical tape. Now that the battery is set up, I can add on the parts. On the black lead connected to the positive side, I'll attach a piece of copper. Here I'm using some copper grounding cable, but any copper item will work. In fact, copper pipe would probably work better. To the green lead, I'll attach the car. Once the parts are connected, I can submerge them in the bath. Now that my plating system is up and running, everything becomes a waiting game. I'm using a very small voltage source in the D-cell, so the plating process will be slow. But that's exactly what I want. If you add a larger power source, the car will plate faster, but also result in a lot of burn marks. These are black marks that form usually at the edges of parts, and will stop the plating process from occurring, giving uneven results. By using a very low voltage source, I can keep that from happening and get good coverage. So this is what the car looks like after about 30 minutes in the bath. You can see that copper is starting to form on the body. And here the car is after about 3 hours. Notice that I'm rotating the car around for good coverage. And here it is 12 hours later and I'm actually taking it out of the bath and it's finished. You'll notice after pulling the car out that it has a very rough looking texture and is very sparkly. These sparkles are very small copper crystals forming on the surface. I need to remove these crystals and begin working on getting a shiny surface. I will start this process by using some triple aught steel wool. I slowly go over the car with steel wool. At first the body seems very abrasive, but after several passes with the steel wool, the surface smooths out and actually takes on a more shiny and metallic finish. So here's what the car looked like after I was done with the triple lot steel wool. If you like a sort of brush type of 
copper look, this looks pretty cool. So now I get to the fun part, polishing the car. To do this, I'll be using a buffing wheel with the green polishing compound. This compound is intended for soft metals like copper and silver. I found out in past tests that you can actually go pretty rough with the polishing. The copper layer is amazingly robust and will allow me to really go to town without polishing through the copper layer. Here's what the car looked like after polishing. While I'm pleased with this result, I still have a way to go to get a more even surface. The first thing I'll need to do is get the paint to go through my airbrush. This will allow for a much smoother surface to start with. The better the paint, the better the final result. As I said before, I would like to nickel plate these cars to get a shiny silver surface. The surface can then be painted over with Spectraflame paint. There are some additional chemicals I could add to the bath to help the plating process. Sulfuric acid comes to mind as a good example, as it gives the copper throwing power. However, any exposed die cast gets eaten by the acid, so while you might have a nice plate job, you also might be missing part of your car. By the way, this also works on plastic or pretty much anything you can get the paint to stick to. If you do try it on plastic, be aware that the paint layer has to be pretty thick, and you may need to add additional D-cell batteries. I can get away with one D-cell battery here because the car is made of metal and thus carries the same voltage pretty much all over the car body. Plastic won't do this, so you have to totally rely on the paint. While the paint is conductive, it's not nearly as conductive as metal, so you'll need more voltage to overcome the resistance of the paint. Once I get this process worked out, I do plan to use it to re-chrome old vintage plastic parts, like engines and such. If you have any ideas or questions, please put them below and I'll do my best to read and respond to them. If you give this method a shot, please let me know your results and if you found any ways to improve it. Also, please like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.